Okay, everyone, I had a request from a viewer to kind of see what I'm building and kind of explain exactly what it is. And here's a picture of essentially what I'm building. This is a picture of a timber frame that was built by another member of the Forestry Forum. Um, and I'm essentially building this frame um, almost almost exactly. There's a, there's a few uh, details on the end wall girts and stuff that are going to be different. My doors are are basically going to be right here. My main door to the barn will be right here, so this girt won't be there. But these two side girts will be. Um, the roof will be the same. My rafter foot detail is actually going to be a bird's mouth detail instead of the step lap rafter detail you see in this picture, but that's essentially the frame. And so when I'm cutting that big through mortise, if you see me chiseling that big through mortise that goes all the way through the beam, well, that big through mortise is for this tie beam right here, and that big through mortise is right there. This tenon on this tie beam goes all the way through this post, and that's the through mortise. These are the brace pockets, brace pocket here, and a and a base, a brace. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble talking. A brace pocket here, and then of course these are the girts. And so when I do the joinery, that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. And you'll see that this main tie beam, this tenon needs to be super strong. And so that's why it's a through tenon. It actually goes all the way through the beam. This tenon is full length and the end of the tenon will be visible on the outside of the post. So basically, that's the brace pocket. And a pocket for one of the girts. And that brace pocket coincides with that tenon because that is the tenon for that um, rafter plate that you saw and then if we flip the beam a little bit you'll see that that's the through mortise and you can kind of see that there's a through hole there the rest of it the holes are there they're just not cleared out and so when I cut these joints, I'll refer to them um, as to what I'm cutting. So at least this way, you have an idea of what I'm building and you can have it in your mind. As I cut the timbers, you can have it in your mind of, of what I'm trying to accomplish. Okay, everyone, I'm gonna try and show you how this boring machine works and how we operate it. I'll release the latch and I'll bring it down and what I did is I scored the lines I don't know if you can see them but I scored the lines on this mortise and this is the through mortise for the main tie beam that goes across on each bent so this is going to be a through mortise this mortise goes all the way through this beam and the tenon on the tie beam goes all the way through so we're going to have to drill uh, down or bore down uh, this will go in about seven inches and then we'll have to flip the beam over and finish it on the other side and if the measurements are correct which you know hopefully they should be then the holes will match up and so then once i think i've got it lined up well then i'll flip this other latch mechanism to allow it to spin and i kind of eyeball the sides of the hole with the bit and it looks like it's lining up so then if it looks like it's lining up then I'll keep turning it and get that auger bit to bite so once it starts to bite then I can kind of see when it starts to peel the wood where I'm at on my mortise and it looks like I'm right on the money so if I'm on the money and we start drilling. And it's just a... slow process. By hand, it's not nearly as fast, obviously, as a hand drill, or an electric drill. We want to keep a little down pressure. I'm keeping a little down pressure on it to try and make sure that that auger bit That auger tip stays 
keeps a bite because that's what's pulling it down through. It gives you some satisfaction knowing that you're putting a tool to use that you know guys used you know 100 years ago or whatever. I flip my lever. Lift my bit out. And there you have a straight hole. Okay everyone, we're over here on the east side of the garage in the shade. It's 105 degrees today. I believe I saw 106 degrees today. But over here in the shade it's only 97. We kind of went over how to drill a hole and I was flipping levers and you couldn't see that because I was trying to show you how we actually line it up on the timber. But this is how the machine works. So we have this top lever which holds it in place, which holds it up. It's still in the lift, lift mode so I can raise it up here. And how it works is you basically have just three gears. This is the main gear. It works like a rear end in a car. Uh, the horizontal shaft that, that you drive with the handles and it meshes with the vertical shaft. And how we drill a hole is we basically slide this over and this little lever flips down and rides on the slip. And you can see these gears right here, how they're disengaged now. And that allows it to spin freely and that allows us to drill our hole. So as we drill our hole, we're drilling our hole and when we get to the end of the hole, I back it up a few turns and we'll kind of pretend we're drilling a hole here. I back it up a few turns, I flip this lever can do it here without sitting on it. Flip that lever and that meshes into these gears. Um, I'll kind of show you how that works. Usually I'm like in this mode. So I flip the lever and you can see as I spin this, it'll click in. And when it clicks in, that locks the main horizontal shaft into the lift, lifting gear, which is in contact with the lifting arm. And then once we do that, we just pull it up out of the hole and we're done. I'm just kind of checking it to see where I'm at here. like I'm about where I want to be on this side it's not quite perfect yet but I want to get the other side the other side squared up and hollowed out before we do any fine tuning this is a spot where I had a knot and uh, the blowing machine just wouldn't go through it the knot the wood in the knot's too hard and it caused the, uh, caused the auger tip to strip out. So we got to just hammer out this little piece here in between two holes. Shouldn't take too long. In fact, there it is. So I'm going to keep working on these mortises. Um, hopefully you got to see um, how those holes are drilled with that boring machine. You got to see how that boring machine works. I hope that was interesting to you. And then now that you've seen a picture of what I'm going to build, maybe when I'm, when I'm working on these different joints, you can kind of remember that picture and kind of remember what we're doing. I'll refer back to that every once in a while um, when I show you what I'm trying to accomplish. but. Pretty much that's what I'm doing. Um, and it's kind of all in my head. I don't necessarily have a, a written drawing, per se. Um, but that's kind of how I build. 
That's kind of how I do stuff. I'm not saying that's right or that's wrong, but that's just how I do stuff. But I hope you find this interesting. I'm having a lot of fun. Um, and this is going to be a pretty fun project and it'll be pretty interesting to see it unfold. I can't wait to stand up the first bent. Boy, when that sucker goes in the air and it stands up straight, it's going to be a good feeling. Thanks for watching. Make sure that you like and subscribe. Push that little button right there. And when you do subscribe, make sure you hit the little bell so you don't miss any part of the journey. And we'll see you next time.